Hi, and welcome to the Investing on a 9-to-5 podcast. I'm Paul. And I'm Teddy. We are excited that you are joining our show, Investing on a 9-to-5, where we will talk about our investment journey, our current strategies, and learn about all kinds of investing-related topics. But before we dive in, we are not financial advisors. We will not be held liable for any personal investing decisions or losses that you may occur in the market. This page is purely for entertainment purposes only. Good morning, Dividend Dogs. Petty, what's crack a lacking? What's up, Mr. Options Legacy? Man, busiest is, man on the planet. Paul it is has the been busiest. a minute. I've I been mean, texting and calling Paul, going to the voicemail, <laughs> no response. I'm like, this man is now running the entire university not down true, there. Not, not true. <laughs> I'm like, they taught, they got my podcast buddy away from me. They took them away from us, guys. We were working 10 tens. <laughs> it has been nuts, man. I can't even believe how crazy it's been. Between your promotion, you being out of town, out of pocket, going and seeing the secret inner workings of the Corvette. Oh. That mess. And oh, my yeah. just life, it's been crazy. I'm glad we're finally getting together, though. Yes, finally back. Catch up. Back on... I would say our regular, what do they say, your regular scheduled programming? Now, returning to our regular scheduled program. The Investing on a 9 to 5 podcast. Yeah. In your ears and on your screen. Hopefully, you guys have been thinking about us out there. Shout out to all of you guys for tweeting at us, letting us know you guys have been thinking about us. And Definitely. sticking with us, even through yes. our unpredictable posting. Because we've, know- really tr- we've really been trying to get on, on air. <laughs> It's been, it's been like, let's do like a little recap. So you, you got promotion. We talked about that, which is awesome for you. So you had to go out of town for a little bit and tell me about that. Tell me about being, where'd you go? Detroit? Yeah. So I had to fly out and obviously go back to Detroit and it was like an intro week to uh, the, like the, the, the training that we're going through for sale, the sales management program. And, um, yeah, it was a cool week. We got a lot of intro to the history of GM and shout out to my wave 32 people out there. They're listening to the podcast. Definitely, you know, talk to them about, you know, you know, we were just talking about stuff that we do outside of work. And obviously, you know, it's, it's not one of my passions here. So, um, yeah, gave, you know, dropped a little link on us. But yeah, we talked, like I said, got a whole overview of the program. Got how many, the how many dividend 401ks have you set up just through your, your training week? How many people are now? Well, there's the only ten of, of the us. dividend well, dog. There's only ten of us, including me. So, I mean, you you can say nine. There you go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, listen. Before I said anything, um, it was funny. I was like, "This is not financial advice." <laughs> <laughs> but hey, listen. If you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna, you know, if we're gonna be around each other, working hard and on the same team. Why not? You know. Well, I think also it generates a little bit to. of. It's nice to get to know what, what everyone's interested in because you never know what you might yeah. find out someone else is doing. You might all of a sudden go, oh, yeah, pottery sounds cool. I'm going to get into that. But at the same time, I mean, you genuinely care about other people regardless of how much, how well you know. Like anyone I talk to, if if, in, if the topic of investing comes up, I'm like, oh, you know, what do you do? What do you know about? And if I can help at the same time, if I can learn from them because mm-hmm. you and I know, you know, we are, we're in this group and the, the dividend community is so good about sharing knowledge. That you learn stuff you didn't know before, you get a different yep. perspective that you maybe didn't consider before, and all of a sudden, just because Celsius doesn't pay a dividend doesn't mean you're not going to invest in it because Dave Greta said it's a great company. That's what Shout I'm saying. So I'm just you know so having that open mind and then and an, and and at the same time the open willingness to share that just a, that's just transfer of information. So you're showing yeah. your your new coworkers how much you're willing to share. And you hope they do back with you. But at the same time, you're looking out for their future. Exactly. The only reason I even got into the boat and even said anything was because when we were filling everything out, we had a time to go through. They made like a time for us to go through it. And one of our facilitators, you know, that was leading the program, that's leading the program. He, he said, hey, guys, make sure you take advantage of the 401k. So in 20 years, you're not looking at your account saying, why didn't I put more in? And my light bulb went off like, all right, dude, mm-hmm. when he, you know, when he gets done, whenever, after we take our break, say something. Right. Say something. I can't tell you how many times when I've been onboarding and you ask them, okay, how does this work? The 401k or 403b? And they're like, 
I don't know. You really got to kind of read into it. There's a number you can call. The people who are helping you with the paperwork, they're not they're not involved in it. And if they are, they really shouldn't be giving you advice, obviously, because they work for the company and you know it's a personal decision. But mm-hmm. to be able to be the person in the group saying, not advice, I'm not a professional, but this is my experience when it comes to this. This is what I'm doing in my life. You can take some of this and, and apply it to yourself if you if you're interested. And if, if you want to know more, then let's chat over a beer, you know, later on today. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. think that's great of you. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And you know, it was it was a quick, easy conversation and and you know, I I said, Hey, this is exactly what I'm doing with mine too. So, you know, why not take advantage of it? Do you get a uh, company match? Yes. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yep, we get that and uh we get advantage of stock purchase too. Right. There you go. So, that's yep. so awesome. So cool. So very, very, very blessed on that. But yeah, that I'm very excited to be a part of Team GM. Yeah, I'm very excited for the future. And yeah, I think this is a career move here that I've been looking for ever since I graduated from college. So I'm going to make sure I work 10 times extra that's awesome. hard. I think that's, I'm really oh. proud of you. Not proud of you. I mean, you're not my kid or anything, but I'm happy for you. <laughs> because No, no, no. I'm the dog, man. I'm I know, but dog. I'm really happy for you because that's, that's an amazing thing to, to have because I knew where you grew up and I know, you you know, you grew up in the, in the shadow of the big three, GM, Ford and Chrysler. They're right there in Detroit. So to be able to look at that and go, man, you're there now, you know, you're, you're moving on up and, and you're young. So I'm really excited to be, to be your friend and to see what you do in the, in the coming years. Cause you're going to do big things, dog. You're going to be doing big yeah, things. And there's some cool people, you know, in the program too, you know, making connections with them because, you know, you never know where they're going to be at, you know, 10 years down the line. Cause right. They can sprawl out, you know, in the next five years and go do all sorts of things that be in different parts of the company. So just be cool to see, you know, where we're going. So shout out That's to all awesome. those EVs that are on the way. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Enough, yeah, enough on me. Give me and us an update on what you've been doing. <laughs> Obviously, I want to know what has been going on with Amazon selling. It's been good. So in general, you know, not only do we do we give it do we give our perspective investing because we're 95 workers we have regular jobs but our families come into the play mm-hmm. so over the last like couple of months i've got my kids have had you know different kinds of appointments doctors appointments and stuff my wife has had you know i've shared on the podcast that my wife suffered a stroke right before covid back in 2020 so there's lingering effects of that that she needs treatment mm-hmm. for so we've been going to different doctors and stuff she's got some issues with her eyes we had to go to to a specialist last week where they actually gave her injections in her eyeball. Like I had to sit there and hold her hand while they gave her like the needle went in the eyeball. It was it was so Oh my God. It was so crazy to see, but you know, and it was painful. But it's like things like that that are going on, you know, those and, and, and just it's kind of out of pocket after that because there's pain and stuff involved. So, you know, the kids and the family and work is all just kind of just just kind of piled on. At the same time, I'm trying to uh, hold on real quick. Got a little singing angel in my background. <laughs> so uh, at, the, at the same time, you know, so at work, my the the my boss who I was hired there in July with the idea that he was going to be retiring soon, mm-hmm. and at the end of uh, at the end of April, he kind of took a step back from full time work, and he's only coming in a day or two a week. So I've been kind of taking on the the duties that he did as far as running our security division and CCTV stuff. So that has piled more daily work onto me. And then Amazon, I'm trying to keep that going. So that's involving just, you know, researching and sourcing and buying and staying, yeah. staying, staying active in, 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 in the Amazon community that I'm in. It's not so much on Twitter. It's more of a discord based kind of a so with Jamar and, and Jamar and them. And so he's not, really, yeah, I don't see him much and he's not in the, in the discord i mean he does his own thing pretty much on twitter but the people that he kind of put me in touch with they they have a discord and then there's another group of amazon there's another amazon community that's pretty active on facebook okay so the between those two groups you know i'm interacting with 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 different people with different sellers trying to meet there's a there's a group of three or four guys who are kind of like me we're in our our later stages of life looking for a second career in amazon you know getting out of the nine to five run and trying to go that route and then there's other group of people who are more local to to this area where I live in, and you know you try to like share ideas and stuff. So that's just that's where the busyness comes in, and mm-hmm. it's been great. This last weekend, that's good. 
here in our local area, the city we live in put on a citywide garage sale. Like they advertised it and promoted it. So, you know, we decided let's participate in that. So we so went how to our do, do people donate to No, to get they that? just you just go on the on the city website and you register your address saying, Yeah, we're gonna participate. So they do all the like they do Facebook promoting and it's kind of like a known thing in the region that there was I talked to some people who came out from Tulsa, Oklahoma. They rented a U Haul and drove out here for the weekend because I think like five hundred houses in the neighborhood in the city participated in the That's awesome. That I think that so, gets more engagement than other people it, trying to put and, on their own garage sale, right? I feel yeah, like we did good. We we cleared about three hundred bucks and and just trying to just going through loose junk. And then it was not bad. So, I mean, it's just been like, we we were doing that last weekend, you know, I going to the storage unit, cleaning it out, getting stuff out. So it, that's just, an, that's the business I've been involved in. It's boring, run of the mill life stuff that everyone deals with, but it's something that, you know, unfortunately that, you know, talking and, and, and this is a disparaging to you, but the podcast has had to take a little bit of a backseat when, yeah. when trying to schedule all this stuff. But I think I homework. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I think our listeners understand and that's where it is, you know, at the same time, I've got some, you know, I've, I've done a few things in the stock market, not a whole lot. I've just kind of let things sit there. I'm still doing my weekly options calendar spread for Apple, which is, I haven't lost yet since the beginning of the year. haven't had a losing week averaging about 18% on that, but that savings account. Yeah. Just letting yeah. things sit there. So it, it's been good. It's been, it's been really, really busy, but I'm looking forward to school being out at the end of May for the kids mm -hmm. and you know, we got some plans. Go, even though the Cardinals are sucking butthole this year with their with their record, I'm gonna go see a game. They need to sign my boy Jacob Bosiakovic out there. He's looking for a team to play. Well, he throws 97 miles an hour. I played a starter ball. or a reliever. We he was a reliever. Starting. He got all the way up to AAA with you guys, and he oh, uh, got released. He's throwing 97 in the bullpen. That's man. Well, our starting pitching. We had a couple of good outings last couple of games. But our offense and defense, man, they just are not making some really silly errors. We're getting beat by the Giants. I mean, yeah. come on, that's just it's really too Paul. You, you I know, know but... of those guys really don't play serious to the after the All Star break. Dude, we're like <laughs> ten and eighteen. I mean, this is not. I mean, even like you see the records, like they're like when they were like when they're like three or four games out of five hundred, they're like, oh, you know, this the two thousand six team started off bad too, and like they came around the World World Series. And now you're seeing like they're like they're so deep in the in the in the weeds now. They're like, no team has ever come back from this kind of a starting record and made it to the playoffs in the postseason. So it's really disheartening to see them playing so poorly because they're not like that. They're not, you know, the only mm. the only the only I got my my brother in law who's a and he's he's in mourning right now because the A's are leaving Oakland, but he's been an Oakland A's fan since he was a kid and and he's really upset, but they're like five and twenty-eight or something. So I can't feel too. They bad. gotta get out of Oakland. That they're I'm going sorry. to Vegas, so they're going to Vegas. Viva La Vixie! Yeah, come to Vegas, baby. Let's go. They're going to Vegas, <clears throat> so we'll see what happens when they move. But that's life, man. Baseball is going on. That's what. That's the focus too. Is baseball. <clears throat> oh yes, baseball is back in in the swing of things. I got um, my ticket, my season tickets though for my Razorback football tickets. I. Did the final uh -oh. my final pick with them, so I got some good seats. Okay, heck yeah! You see the uh, speaking of the Razorbacks, what do you think of uh, Colorado? What do you think they're going to do this season for color for fo college football? What are you thinking? They're going to make a rumble out there. My knowledge of college football goes about as deep as these are the Razorbacks. Uh oh, <laughs> and they're in the SEC. I haven't before I came before we moved here. I didn't follow any college sports at all, really. And getting here, and I mean, it's such a religion now here, you know, the football team, woo pig, suey, the whole deal. So I really learned what, it, well, I really didn't know. I didn't know the difference between the SEC and the Big Ten or any of that kind of stuff. So I learned about at the about the SEC during this last football season. You know, I was down there in the security bunker, you know, doing, doing our job, but yeah. also learning about football. But, you know, we can't really watch the game. We're working. So just learning. I don't know any of the players. I don't know who's who or what's what. You know, I know the coach, but other than that, you know, I, I'm not a big follower of college football. Hopefully the Razorbacks do well, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the same way. You know, I, I watch it, you know. I know what's going on in the game, and but like you said, I don't know who's really who. But, you know, I'll root. You know, I root for the team. 
Right. They score. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see here. I got some uh, MLB rankings up here. So we got Tampa Bay coming out hot, 23 and crazy? 5. It's crazy. What is man. going on down here in Tampa? We got the Yankees, 15, 13. Those are my guys. I'm not, you never sleep on them. Toronto, they're really trying to, they're really trying to be the new Boston of the they East. They really are. Well, they got some good pickups. They got some, you know. Vlad's yeah, trying to be Vlad. a villain so bad. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to be the Yankees like David Ortiz for the. He he's really trying is. To have but he's that, got the like, talent. Like, he doesn't yes, have just the he, name. He's got the talent that came with the name. So yeah, he's fun to watch. I like watching Vlad. Oh yeah, yep. I like <clears> I like watching him hit the ball, man. He he knows how to drive a baseball. And then my Tigers, man. You know, I'm always rooting for them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they're still the Tigers. Yeah. Oakland A's. <laughs> they're kind of. <laughs> Like I'm always rooting for the Tigers, no matter what. But man, and then Kansas City. I don't know what's going on with these guys. Kansas City and Chicago, they're just fighting for it. And then Texas. I think Texas is going to be a. They're going to be a hammer. This, they got those, there was a those rumor, two rookies. When I was watching the game last night because they're in LA. The Cardinals are in LA right now, and, and Clayton Kershaw was a starting pitcher, and he's a monster. He dude's just a machine. Oh, man, they were that, throwing out a rumor that the Rangers were looking at picking him up on his next contract. Yeah. And they were talking about how it's kind of they can't picture. He's one of those players that like he's a Dodger blue. You know, it's Clayton Kershaw at the Dodgers. It'd be hard to mm-hmm. picture him in something else. But uh, there's an interesting rumor that the Rangers might be looking to make a bid on old Clayton when he comes up to free agency. Listen, if they pick up Kershaw, they're gonna have a dominant lefty, <clears throat> and then they have two dominant rookies, Jack Leader mm-hmm. and Kumar Rocker, both powerhouse guys from Vandy's. That throw 96 plus with no problem and filthy off speed. It's Al Jack Leader is Al Leader's son. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he's he's an, he's a dog on them. He's a dog. They on need them. they need it's pitchers out. to replace the, the the garbage can drums. <laughs> 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 oh, that was the Astros, the other Texas team. Sorry. Oh yeah, I'm looking. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. That's Houston. That was the Astros. Oh yeah, but it's it should be interesting. I'm I'm interested. I'm interested to see what Texas is is going to do here the next few years. That's my team yeah. to watch there, Texas. Yeah, it is early, but it's disheartening. I texted my friends this morning. I said, man, I, it sucks to know what a Giants fan feels like now. Because <laughs> they're Giants fans I'm back in California. So they, uh-huh. didn't take, they didn't take too kindly to the text, but it was still funny. Yeah, they, you know, Giants fans, you know, they think they're they're gonna they're gonna win the World Series every year, like it's their year because it was it drove me crazy. <laughs> they had that they had that little stretch of like two years where they yes. won, and they're like dynasty. It's the dy- I'm like, dude, a dynasty is not two years. No, you gotta do three P. You have oh, to man. do you have to say you get the before you get the dynasty, you got at least three P. Like you gotta like, say this would be you even say dynasty but it's the entitlement of california though that's just what it is it's it's evident right there oh man and then we got atlanta 18 and 9 those guys from the atl are swinging it like crazy man they're good 18 that's good let's see arizona they they're got coming drew up jones. a little bit yeah they got drew jones jr or drew jones andrew jones's son yeah Brooke. arizona's they're doing well yeah and, and all these teams you're reading off of Yep, they beat us. Yep, they beat us. Yep, they what, beat us. Have you guys played the Orioles? You know, the uh, Orioles yeah. got a Rory Holiday's. You know, Rory Holiday. Played oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, yeah. They got they drafted his son. Yeah, um, not Roy Holiday. How can they not? How did they not pick him up? How did Holiday not? Like, how did you guys not call Holiday and say, hey, man? They had him. We had Holiday as a batting coach. They hired him in the offseason. It's not Roy Holiday. It's Matt Holiday. They hired him in the off season yeah, as a batting coach. Man. Yeah, my holidays. And then he, before the spring training, he said, "I'm actually going to bow out and go continue supporting my kid because he's got he's got his son who just entered the draft, and he's got another one I think in college. Okay, and he's coaching and he's helping coach. I think it's OSU. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, no that's what it is. Somewhere. OSU because yeah. that's where he graduated so, from. Yeah, he was our he was going to be our batting coach, our hitting coach, and then. Before the season even started, he bowed out. Wow, he can so, do. His kid can. Yeah, hit. it's you know you see him. He's got shaggy, you know, shaggy blonde hair, and you know he gets in that box, man. He just rips yeah. and rips it like he looks like, like Mabry. Guy there that's, huh? Mabry, like yeah, hair, the little bushy hair. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, he's he's definitely awesome, and you know he's one of our, our St. Louis Cardinals Hall of Famers for local, you know, and he'll he may be destined for the Hall of Fame. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, that was it. Was upsetting when 
you know, we're excited that he was going to come on as the as the hitting coach, and then all of a sudden, you know, he decided to take a different turn. But that's the way it goes. I, I get it. Oh, his yeah. kids are there, and you hear these players talk about how they spent so much of their lives, you know, in baseball, and they're gone, you know, from spring training until the postseason. They're never home, so I can. And you miss a lot. Where, I it, October. It bothered me to miss so much of my kids growing up and stuff, and not be there for their games, not be there for their events and things. So I see, mm-hmm. you know, once they're once they're able to get out, that they're able to go be part of their kids' lives. That's what Wainwright has always talked about. You know, this is I think this is going to be as finally as last year, but the last couple of seasons, he's talked about wanting to to spend more time with his family and be there for his kids. But you know, the, right. the, the lure of the game, I can imagine. You know, he wants to get those two hundred wins. He wants to get some numbers that. We'll put him at least in the discussion for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, because I mean time, that's why he started, you know. Right. But that so is we'll the hard game, though. When you, when you, you know, you have a family, and then you know, family becomes bigger than the game. Because that's that. That's yeah. at, that's at the end of the day. And looking back, that's all you got is your family around the game. So, but you also have that young bull that you know when you're in the minors, you're just ready to go, and that grind starts, and you can't stop that grind. It's like Tom Brady, Brett mm-hmm. Favre. Look at Brett Favre. Guy retired once. You came right back again. And was like I can't sleep. Yeah. Well, they all did. Michael you Jordan know. did it. You know they they Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, but that's that's the fun part about sports and and looking out. You can you can really apply it to you know to your life as well. Yeah, that's why we came out here. You know, we left California and left the to be out here where we have the opportunity to be this thing for the family, to be around for them, and to even if it is just running between appointment to appointment, you know, it's the freedom to do so. And the, there's no stress at work that I'm going to, that I'm missing something or that people are talking crap behind my back because I'm not there, just all kinds of things, you know? So it's a good mm-hmm. feeling. Do you, I don't know if you guys have this down there and in in where you are what? in Georgia, but this is the most unfortunately named is it coming up. Wait, there it is. Oh, come and go. Coming. <laughs> I think I may have seen a couple of them, but every time I do see them, I'm like, dude, why is that place named Come and Go? I know our friends, our friends, I always say it. our friends came up and go, and they like, is there really a place called Come and Go with a K? I'm like, yeah, yeah, they really named it Come and Go. <laughs> that and there's funny. this weird like rivalry out here between the Come and Go and the Casey's. Like, if you go in Come and Go and you say the, like, oh, I was at Casey's, they're like, get out, you know, they like. <laughs> oh, some man, kind of, is that type of rivalry? Yeah, man, they, they don't like each other here. It's something else. Anyway, it's funny. I just I'm drinking my my soda out of the come and go cup, so I Ooh, couldn't get more southern. So you got you got Coca Cola in there. This is actually Diet Mountain Dew. Diet Mountain Dew. Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Ooh, you so, know what? You know what's funny? You know what? You know Intel has just been. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Wow. I'm not gonna say anything. But let me yeah. see. I just let me look at my dogs in the Dow portfolio because that's where I keep track of my um, intel. New report just came <clears> out. <throat> did it? When did it? When did it come out? On the 27th. Okay. That it's, uh, you know, it has a bullish trend. It said in the recent months, Intel also provided its PC nodes and product roadmap and data center. Um, wow. Market leadership and blunt aggressive towards AMD. It- Intel is the best return right now in the dogs of the Dow. Seven, it's up seven point nine nine percent as of the close on Friday for me. I got in at twenty eight dollars a share. It's at thirty one. Let's do a quick dogs of the Dow. So Intel is up eight percent. Do your dance, Paul. Dow is up three point twelve. Verizon is up three. Three M is up two and a half, almost two point four six. Cisco, I think they're, they're going to make a bounce back too. Yeah, Cisco is up two and a quarter. J.P. Morgan up one point five. Chevron up one point three. Amgen up a little over one percent. Walgreens up a little over half a percent. And even IBM is up point zero two percent. I am one hundred percent all green in dogs of the Dow right now. Woo 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 woo! That's <clears throat> is what we call buy and holding. And that's all it is. I bought at the beginning of the year and have held and have not touched it. Excuse me. <clears throat> and that was your dogs of the Dow update, but and led by Intel, eight percent. That's crazy, dude. And it just we need to go back and get all your tweets from when Intel cut the dividend, and you saying just chill, just chill. Yes, I the stock market is a what is it in the short term? It's a fed out there. Sorry, I was responding no, to I, the wife. No, like, no. hey, make sure make sure dogs <laughs> getting fed out there. Uh, shout out to the wifey. She's amazing. She's been doing well at her job too. 
she's been so married. what so you said something about that she got a bonus or she got a she just got asked to do to do a little bit she has a little go she asked she got asked to go into the clinic now so what that okay. means she'll she'll just be working in the clinic and then you know it comes with a little bit more benefits for her okay so, good yeah. when will you find out your like home base like when are they going to send you and move you and do all that kind of stuff so or are they going to is that still on the table yeah they won't let us know until about august honestly okay yeah because i won't get done with training until about september so awesome. this is very ex- intensive training by the way yeah you busy like yeah like i'm busy i have homework assessments that i have to put into you know you know a program that all facilitators are like watching and we have okay. progress to like monitor it. We have due dates on certain things that we have to do this week and next week on who we need to be speaking with while we're at the dealerships. So I'm at the dealership, you know, learning all the internal processes now for the next like 30 days, um, meeting with like different departments right now. Awesome. Um, Tell yeah, me about we No, we go ahead. Oh, no, till like August, okay. September. Mm-hmm. So you've met a couple of guys that did you meet some guys or you heard about some guys that hit it big with day trading? and bounce oh, out yeah. of the dealership uh, yeah i was just talking with the the marketing director and you know i love the corvettes and you know obviously i saw one and you know i had to keep my composure at work <laughs> but inside i'm like ah but anywho <laughs> i really have like that that is just so funny <laughs> just that that little loud. but yeah she was like yeah we had two of them and then and then we lost two salesmen and i'm like oh wow like what happened you know i'm like yeah, just say that. And I, I'm like, yeah. I gotta know what happened. She goes, well, they were like day trading, like stocks. And she was like, <laughs> they figured out the day trade and they bought the two and then they, they left the dealership because they had rental properties and then they had investment oh, wow. paying them. I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Okay, yeah, let me get their names. And in the back of my head, I'm like, <laughs> wow, those dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I hope it lasts. <laughs> that's the thing. But oh, good for yeah, you. <laughs> immediately like when i uh, got on my next break i had texted my wife i'm like you will not believe <laughs> like that is just wild no, that that happened. but hopefully you know i'm excited to go anywhere you right know, they let me know so right. that'd be good yeah i'm it's not gonna venture really, for y'all you know the first year i'm there to grow and 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 learn you know more about the business and everything but it's been a fun process though i can tell you right. that <laughs> So one thing I kind of wanted to talk about. Yeah, go ahead. I've been experiencing with AI. Have you heard about this? It might have been in the news a little bit. AI? You know, Who's you talking about? Alan Iverson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. AI. Hey, ew, ew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heck so, yeah, Mr. Chat GPT. Yeah, man. I know about him. So this thing has what kind of sparked me to want to talk about it here was in in one of in one of the Amazon Discords. There's a youngster. He's 19 or 20. He's getting into it. And of course, I mean, you see my, um, my handle options legacy. That's, that's, I still have that kind of in the discord. It's my handle too. It's basically the same thing I have on Twitter. So he, he sent me a DM and he's like, so you do investing and stuff. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I've been wanting to get into that too. I'm like, all right. And he's like, you know, have you done like day trading stuff? He's like, he's like 19, 20. So he hears all this, you know, whatever. And I go, yeah. I said, that's, that's something, and I told myself honestly. I said, "You got to kind of go through a process, and, invest, and we've all done it. You know, we all kind of got into either options or day trading or penny stocks, and then you end up kind of finding your niche. You know, whatever works for you. If if if, if doing penny stocks works for you, great. I know people who've done really well with that. There's people mm-hmm. like you know who've done really well day trading. I, I I said it wasn't for me. It's not my my temperament. It doesn't suit my my mindset." And what I yeah. want to do in the future, but I've tried it. And I said, so just, you know, my advice to you is to read up on it and, and get lots of education about things. Don't jump into things just blindly because, you know, you lose real money. And he yep. said, well, what do you think about AI? Is is AI going to be something to invest in? And I, so I thought about that. I, I didn't want to give him some kind of just like, you know, pat answer and say yes or no. So I thought a lot about it. And you and I kind of talked a little bit about, you know, was it C3 AI, the company and and I see it now. So there's a there's a podcast called the All In Podcast, and it's you, you sent me that. Um, I sent you a link. Ago. Yeah, it's a weekly I podcast. That. Well, that one every so for the last few episodes they've done like a little bit about the 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 how AI has grown and how it's kind of developing, and it's just been lightning. 
speed from mm-hmm. when it, from when chat gpt first kind of like hit the scene and you could go on there and kind of play with it to what it's with the different kinds of things have been developed since then it's it's pretty incredible what's how it's grown in in both being able to generate you know visual stuff and and words and different techniques and things so what i've been able to do is i try to use their that podcast is kind of a roadmap what it's going on different sources so i found a guy on twitter and he lists he he does like a constant like ai thing like these are some these are some cool to, tools in ai now this is a you know some some progress that's being made and um here's what i've done so far with ai so with chat gpt i have yeah. been able to um i've used it to make a cover letter for applying for different jobs I take in my resume and I upload my resume that I paste it in chat GPT. Then I take a job description and I put that in there and I say, now take my resume and the job description and create a cover letter that makes, makes, it makes me, you know, for this job, boom, it does a whole little, and you go through, you have to edit it. Cause it's still, it's still a computer doing it. So you get, you know, I write, everyone does writes with a certain voice. You have a certain, you know, style of writing, whatever it is. So you kind of have to go through and edit it, kind of make it your own. But at mm-hmm. the same time, you have the format there. You have the bones of what it needs to be. So right. I was doing some other research. So with, this is kind of go back to my job is when my, when my boss left, there was, he had kind of like this very loose outline of a training program for our, our CCTV system. It's, it's from a company named Avigilon. That's the company that produces our cameras. So he said, you know, when you are training new people, here's the, here's what I used to train them with. So I went through it and it was kind of like, you know, he's, he's in the seventies. So it was kind of written like a guy in the seventies would write or document about how to talk about training something. It's kind of like him just typing what he would say. So I kind of rearranged things and kind of put it in order and, and rewrote a little bit. And then I took it and I took what I wrote and I uploaded it to another AI. I found, okay. I can't remember the name of it, but it's not chat GPT. But you can upload a document into this AI and you can say, now rewrite this in the form of a blog post, rewrite this in the form of an educational lecture, rewrite this in the form of a letter, rewrite this in the form of a, and you can choose different forms. So I had them, I had it take what I wrote and rewrite it in the form of an educational demonstration presentation. So it kind of went through and it rewrote it, changed some words. I went through behind it and I kind of, you know, made some edits myself. Then I took that edit that it made. And there's another AI that created a PowerPoint for me. So I took that AI and I uploaded the other AI, the PowerPoint one, and it made me a full 11 slide PowerPoint presentation from what I wrote. And all I had to do was go behind it and add some media, like some pictures and some different things like that to make it, you know, more presentable. But Mm -hmm. basically I didn't touch it. I didn't edit anything it did as far as like did perfectly in order and it, everything was just great as far as the heading go. It did its own little headers and bullet points, and it did a perfect PowerPoint presentation. All of that from the time where I took his original file that he gave me until I finished the PowerPoint, maybe, wow, forty-five minutes. That see, so from from I mean, you know, and that's takes you to do a normal to think about even doing enough information to. So that's make what I'm saying. Five. So if and I what I can see. People out there look at this. It's not some weird fluke. And my point is, I don't think this is some weird fluke. This isn't like 3D printing. This isn't, you know, something that's going to come and go. Come and go. Something that's just going to be <laughs> here and then gone. I think it's going to be. Oh, man. It's going to be something that we're going to. If you're going to. And there's people. Oh, yeah. What about the people losing their jobs? Blah, blah, blah. We'll say that to the guy who used to work on the Ford assembly line. You know what I mean? There's. Jobs that are going to go away with technology all over the place, but learning how to use these tools in your job yes. is something that's just crazy and amazing. You know what I mean? So to be able to just even even do some quick proofreading or just do some quick rewrites or just to say, hey, I need to write a paper about how the color green matches my eyes. And it will give you you know a paragraph on that and to be able to go back behind it and just kind of adjust it and fix it and make it your own. Because you've already have a base to go from. I mean, that saves so much time and energy that you don't need to expend. You know, you don't need to recreate the wheel. You can take something that's kind of done already, fix it a little bit, make it your own, and send it off. So it's just, that's my little rant. So I've been thinking a lot about AI and, and how it can be used and how it can work. And I think there's a lot of cool tools out there that are free or inexpensive. I think for those two different tools, I pay like ten dollars a month to have access to the AI to do those kind of unlimited projects. Okay. And I'm doing more in the future 
just for that, just just different different training, because that's my my job now is as this as the manager of this division. You know, I'm creating different trainings. I'm doing different things as far as like organizing the division that wasn't done before I got there. So that's kind of like implementing my vision for for being the the boss that I want to be here. And you know, it's kind of I told our chief of police, I said that's why you hired me, and this is what I want to do. So he's all on board with that. But I don't tell him that I use those tools. That's my little secret. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm using I mean, my secret. True. But yeah, of course. I hopefully, you know, they're not, you know, tapping in. But hopefully, they are listening. They're not listening now. But anywho. But no, so what, what I want to bring this back. Tools. It is, and what I'm what I would bring this around to is a thing that I use too. Um, just like giving me like ideas on on like how to create like more engaging titles. Exactly. You know? Because I yeah. type in titles and I say. I'll make this more this title more engaging. Right. You know, or if you have the document, if you have the document written, you can upload it and say, "Hey, give me give me four possible titles for this this document," and, and it'll do that. You know, it'll do. Oh. It's a it's really cool what it'll do. I want to bring that around though to what we're talking about. And what I eventually told this kid when it comes to investing, I said, "You have lots of options when it comes. You have you have pure play. You know." C3 AI kind of companies that are nothing but Jeep. They're, they're AI companies and that's what they're doing. It's like, you know, Tesla is a pure play EV, right? Um, going in and, you know, I can't even think now, you know, pure play marijuana companies, or you have, you know, Scott's Miracle Grow, or you have GM, you know, you have these different companies that are tangential to the thing. So my point of view right now is, and this is my own personal view. And so I'm not a pure play kind of person anymore. I used to do that, trying to get in, trying to get on the ground floor stuff and see how things will run. You know, that would have been nice to have been in Tesla at 20 bucks, you know, but it's just not something I did. But you can see how Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Apple, and now Meta, Facebook, they are going to, I think AI is going to be the next catalyst to these companies. I think they're going to use it to, to, to launch and create and become that the next thing and they're not really innovating anymore and this is part of that little the Apple last week no one so last week's all in podcast they talk about how these companies they're not really they haven't innovated since when you know they brought up you know the iphone was in or, you know the 2000s google hasn't really innovated at all since since creating google search you know mm-hmm. microsoft and you know meta they've they've um they've acquired companies they've acquired innovation but they haven't innovated on their own so yeah. I think that if you if you get into these companies from the standpoint of there she is yeah hey 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 <laughs> <laughs> getting getting into these companies I think will, unless you're unless you have and you you should have a little percentage maybe in in pure play AI kind of stuff but mm-hmm. going into Google Microsoft Apple Meta now I think you can ride some of this AI stuff into the future I think you're going to find that their their future growth possibilities i think are going to be centered on ai that's my personal view that's my that's how i bring this around to investing is if you know if i'm going to seriously start investing in ai as a as a concept then i may put some more money toward those come i don't think i'll ever invest in facebook for some reason i've got like an internal thing <laughs> smoking companies and facebook to me personal view i don't care what your view is twitter people keep it to yourself i oh, yeah. don't like it i don't like Face, face. I use hey, everyone Facebook. loves Mo. Everybody loves Mo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the Mo. I'm not into the British. What is it? British tobacco, whatever. I don't have any of those companies. I don't. You know, that's just my personal thing for some reason. It's weird. But if from an investing point of view, AI I think is investable, and I would do my 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 style definitely would be more of an Apple, Microsoft, Google um, entry into those companies as opposed to pure play. So that's and I just that's what I want to talk about. Bring that up. Yeah, no, no, AI is on the way. Seriously, if you're if you see in the top players, you gotta do is just watch the top players and what they're doing. If they're starting to acquire AI mm-hmm. and make make their own thing, I mean, look, Snapchat. You got Snapchat's got AI now, mm-hmm. and you know they're they're gonna try to use that to you know to be a power in, in their sector. So you know it's 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 another thing that's on the way. It's just another sleeper. Um, I think the cannabis industry um, is another sleeper too. Uh-huh. They they were really uh-huh. looking positive last summer when they were talking about some laws that maybe but those kind of died in in Congress and, and there was a little bit of a rally last year for cannabis but then it kind of died around September and I haven't mm-hmm. heard any like there hasn't been any news about it like if 
if anyone's going to bring any more bills to the floor to, to get to, it legislated. Yeah. That's what I, that's um, the that's the catalyst behind cannabis is is anything dealing with the laws. And if there's nothing going on there, then it's kind of uh, it's not dead. I won't say dead, but it's not really going to go anywhere. Yeah, I agree. The reason I, I talked about it was I picked up a book yesterday in uh, Barnes and Noble or Barnes and Nobles. When I was in there, I was looking for a book called Just Keep Buying, but obviously it's on Amazon. But I was like, well, I can't leave here empty handed. <laughs> So it's like, well, let me pick this book up. This looks pretty good. And, you know, they, all the other books in there, I like have, you know, I've had, I have, you know, I have a good amount of them. Um, so I was like the next great investment opportunity for investing in the cannabis industry. So I'm going to take a, take a stab at it. I think it's by, yeah, Dan Aaron's, Aaron's or whatever. So I'm going to take a stab at it and see, you know, what the industry is all about. And that leads me into to speaking to what's been going on in the portfolio. Yeah. I added, uh, I've been on like a REIT, been on my REIT hustle again, still. You and Brad Thomas? Yes. And everyone else too. Shout out to Brad out there. Brad's always, Brad's tagging me in his tweets, which is very, very inspiring. Awesome. So he's definitely an awesome guy to follow out there for investing in uh, REITs. You guys should check out his book too, The Intelligent REIT Investor. Uh, but yeah. I picked up IIPR. I actually made a YouTube video on it last week. I like week. IIPR. But I was so busy that I couldn't even like edit it real quick <laughs> and post it. So I was like. Oh, There's an AI for that. Huh? There's an AI for that. <clears throat> There's a, we used to have an app for it. Now there's AI for that. That's right. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> That's what we're going to be saying. Uh, but yeah, picked up IIPR on the bottom. I think it was around. What did it get down to last week? Let's see. I haven't followed it. Here, I'll pull it up here. I picked it up in the Roth. So I've been throwing, like I said, at the beginning of the year, I've been throwing all my REITs in my Roth. Good, good, good play on that, saving the taxes. Oh, yes, sir. Down at 64? Did you get down there? Yeah. My average cost is, I actually got in at 60, actually around 65, 66, actually. Okay. So my cost right now is at 67, 53. But I picked up a couple of shares of that one the bottom and i think i think right there is is was a good spot to buy now am i going to continue to load the boat if it goes lower yeah sure why not i i think this is a a great long-term play i yield they've been growing the dividend as well i'm keeping it in the rod and i can like i said i see you know the future you know for the cannabis industry you know once once everything else from the top slows down, we got, I mean, we have a lot of stuff that's going on at the top. I mean, this is right here. They're not going to put this on front end of the plate to get the cannabis right. legalized when the economy is on front end of falling off of a cliff. You know, we got people, you know, still like losing jobs, layoffs. So I feel like once we get a turnaround and we have some growth in the economy, you know, we have a little bit more economic stability with people, you know, having stable jobs. I don't know. Maybe the housing market has to change. I feel like this right here will hit a boom and this will just help propel us even further, you know, into, you know, to, to right. more, you know, to growth here. So that's just my long-term thinking of it. And that's why I'm, you know, going to read the book on, that's why I picked up that book on investing in the cannabis industry because they're a REIT. They specialize in having the, the facilities that cannabis owners are growing their cannabis in. So, yeah. I had IEPR, I got rid of it well for my wife and her portfolio and i did some realignment in hers to make it more retail oriented mm -hmm. but i had it i remember back so i guess it was late last year they had a lot of negative kind of the same as the mpw some of their tenants you know we're talking about not being able to pay the rent and stuff so that kind of brought iipr down and i think that's the only that's the headwind that iipr is looking at is it's only as good as its tenants MPW had the same thing, and I think it went. It came out pretty well. I know you got out of MPW. But Actually, I did. I did. Remember, I told you I got out, right? Yeah. And I waited. I was like, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait it out. Wait it out, and I'm back up to back. thirty, thirty-five shares now. Yeah. So that's just, that's, and I like IIPR. I like MPW. For those of you out there who are looking at them, that, that's what you need to be concerned about. You gotta look at who their tenants are where their income comes from and you know if because if their tenants can't pay the rent then then they're not going to be able to to give you any kind of return from the div no. dividend and stuff but i think they're good companies and i think they're and if you look at the way the dog was looking at them is set your byline get in if you drop you know 
if you have a like a stop loss, not official stop loss in your account, but if you say, hey, if this gets down 10%, I'm going to go ahead and get out for a little bit, let things calm down and maybe get back in. That's a good way to play them. Yeah, MPW got really, really bad. Like, guys, mm-hmm. like, I'm like, listen, I believe in the company. I know if I continue to DCA, I, it, that's that's just, it, it just wasn't smart to can lose money continuously. Right. And continue to buy in. So I was like, you know what? Let me just stop it here. Put it on the watch list. Watch it on the chart. Once it starts, you know, having some positive areas, then I'll start. I'll start, you know, adding back in at different spots. Good play. Um, good play. And but another one I've been having, that I've been you know been adding heavy to is Vixie. Oh yeah, yeah. Back back in with Vixie. I'm at uh, twenty twenty four shares of Vixie right now. I think I'm really chasing. You know, I'm chasing a hundred shares of Vixie along with I'm I'm going to get my hundred shares back at MPW. The dog is going to get those back, guys. <laughs> We're going to get um, them back. I think I added Vixie somewhere. I think it's in my wife's account. Ew. Yep. Yes. Yep. We've got Vixie. I've got her in at 32.52 average right now. Oh, yeah. Yep. Vixie is obviously casino based. Right. Earlier, we talked about <clears throat> Oakland A's are moving to Vegas. Yep. So Vegas, you know, they have that huge, uh, have you seen that huge like indoor sphere that they have out there? That's going to have like the huge screens. That's going to give you like a huge no. like 5D dimension of like a, like, yeah, it's going to be nuts. Wow. Yeah. Just... I was out there, um, you know, for work. So they were, they were like, they were, you know, in the process of building it. I was like, this is going to be nuts. That's why I just say Viva La Vexi, baby. Viva. <laughs> that's good. Well, let's see. So you say you your wife she had it you added Vixie for her yeah thirty two fifty I've added for oh, her that's, that's good buy and then I've been sprinkling in the AMT too American Tower that's a good one yes that's sir good cell phone towers mm-hmm. cell phone towers and then recently last week I just been buying I sold Abby or not all of Abby I sold it for some profit mm-hmm. and then I took that and picked up SCHD and more ET so now. Update on the SCHD challenge. I'm at 56 shares of SCHD. Nice. Yeah, so I'm rolling strong with that one. And then ET, I think we're almost to like 250 of like shares. I am kind of kicking myself because about a week or two ago, mm-hmm. I was thinking I I need to look seriously at Eli Lilly because I'd heard the stuff about their their weight loss drug. Mongiorno that was gonna they were gonna present up for um for FDA approval. It's it's approved for di- diabetes right now. Uh huh. But um, they were gonna make a run to get it approved for weight loss, and that was back. You know, it was I want to say it was a week or so ago. It was around three seventy maybe. Well, then this last week they made the announcement that they are actually filing to get FDA approval on that, and it ended last week. It went over four hundred bucks. I see on that. that news. I never bought it. I kind of upset about myself that I didn't. It hit oh, new God. new all time highs, new new fifty two week highs. I'm not sure about all time highs, <clears throat> but that's something to look at. It may come back down a little bit because you know FDA approval takes months and years sometimes. So if mm-hmm. this comes back down closer to like you know under 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 four hundred under three, I don't think it's maybe back down to three eighty. If it gets down to three eighty again, to me that would definitely be kind of a buy area. I don't you think we'll see um, those lows, three twenty, the end of March lows, but there's a gap for it to fill uh between wait, is there a gap? I'm not looking at a candlestick, I'm looking at a line chart, so three eighty six and three eighty I think three eighty is a good spot. If it gets to three eighty, that might be someplace to seriously consider for me, not investment advice, but I might seriously consider it at three eighty. Oh yeah, that I see. I from April it looks like April twenty fifth, it like Went down, consolidated, and then it continued to shut up there. Anyone who bought in March was awesome. 320 last year. Oh, yeah. I mean, even if you bought a month ago, you're up 16%. Yeah. So I think that's a good one to watch. If if you're interested in looking at different healthcare opportunities, Eli Lilly is definitely one to keep an eye on. You mentioned Abby. That's what made me think of it. I wasn't planning on talking about it. I've really been thinking of what to do with Abby because – it's just been standing still, honestly. Yeah. You know, I got in at what one sixteen, and what it's one fifty now. I mean, just think. I mean, I could have taken profits a long time ago and bought more ET and made 
you know, that's the big struggle, right? That's the struggle when it comes to any of these things that we're doing is do we go ahead and stick with it? And because I like the company or can I, can I do more with this money somewhere else? You know, you made that calculation with MPW when you initially got out of it. So with a company like Abvi, you, know, you have to make that decision. Is, is it really, is how much, how much there is there? How much is left to, to move this thing forward and what's going to take to make it move forward? Right. And it's just like, do I, even, do I want to wait it out? And it's like with Abby, you know, my thing is I know, you know, with their Humira drug falling off, I know, you know, Renvoke and Sky Rizzi are going to be the leaders, but you know, Wall Street. Sky Rizzi, still... that's not just a Snoop Dogg song title. That's a real thing. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, it's seriously. It's, I think, it's, Sky Rizzi, yo. Sky Rizzi. <laughs> or Sky Rizzi or Rizzi, something like that. Um, but you know, Wall Street, you know, it's still gonna do its thing and grade the grade the stock a different way, even though the company's saying one thing. So that's the hard part of separating the price from the, actually what the company's saying. Like your eyes are like, who do I believe? Right. You know, they're going right. one way or the other. But you know, I, I've always I've just been thinking like, hey, do I want to just say, all right, cash out on Abby, take half of it, or you know, split the you know split what you have in two and two. And just go all in on like Hershey's or something like that, or go all in on split it up between Eli Lilly and Hershey's and just see what the portfolio does with SCHD. Because you got different sectors. Yeah. And little, Eli Lilly. Yeah. You get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, um, damn it, what's the word? When you have different sectors, <laughs> diversity. Diversity. Oh my gosh. I got yeah. you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. A little bit of diversity. <clears throat> you could be you like, like, um, you know, I'm really thinking about Dave. doing that, guys. Really I don't think it'd be a bad deal. It. Because I'm already I already got Avi and S C H D. Yeah. And team at Schwab must see something in Avi that obviously that we see too. So that's why they added it to the you know the front of the port you know the, the You just yeah. you just mentioned another one I think is a little bit of a sleeper and that's Schwab itself. I think Schwab is one that's gonna kinda it, a lot of banking stuff is going on and it's not necessarily a bank. But it acts like a bank, and I think it's got some some tailwinds for it when it comes to how people are changing the way they're doing their investing and stuff. I think you're seeing a lot less Robinhood and a lot more, you know, E Trade and Schwab kind of people getting into business. When TD and Schwab finally make their merger 100% complete, I think you're going to see some growth there behind Schwab. Sweet, because it's kind of just been. I mean, it's SCHD is still on sale, guys. I mean, mm -hmm. buy it up. Because yeah, I don't know when this thing's gonna take off and where it's gonna go when it runs. Because I've never really seen it go. You know, I've never really seen SCHD have a day where it's like this thing is going crazy today. Well, you know? it can it loosely will track you know kind of the the S and P because most of its holdings are in the S and P. So if we do see, I, mean, I think it's gonna continue to be a buy as long as there's these recession fears. You know, probably through the rest of this year. But if you're able to, I'm sure Dan has a has a much more clear outlook on it than I do. But I think if you continue to, to DCA throughout this year, once we start seeing the Fed kind of like back off its raising rates, once it you know, finds a little place where it likes the inflation where it is, or it decides that more rate hikes are more detrimental to the economy in general and not so much about the inflation number, then I think mm -hmm. you'll see the market turn around. And I think SCHD will ride that back up. You'll see it back in the 90s in no time. I hope so. I hope so because it's a great ETF. I mean, I think it's going to do great things down the line. It just has such great value companies. And, you know, I, when I was talking with uh, SCHD Stan um, about, you know, the ETF, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, he was telling me one thing that I didn't know that if they cut the company, cuts their dividend, and SCHD, the Schwab, they get, rid, they get rid of it. That's good. So they have the same kind of rule a lot of dividend investors do. Yes, but sounds like Intel should have been on a lot of you guys' plate. <laughs> well, then, I mean, we talked about this before, but does a dividend cut mean cut or does a dividend cut mean hold because they're more interested in long-term health of the company than they are about the money going out and for dividend. dividend? Yes, everybody's acting like they're retired, like, oh, no, I can't go yeah. out to Denny's. I can't go get my coffee. Intel right. cut the dividend. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey hershey is really looking really looking like a snack hey, dave will tell you that hershey's is going to be always reaching i you know it, it'll have a pullback it's a stock it's just like everything else it's going to go up it's going to come back down but it's always going to be just reaching a little bit higher than the s p 
And I think listen, that's not a bad place to be. Listen, I'm really thinking running a three way a three way call here. Hear me out. I'm about to Tom Brady this thing <laughs> out of Abby. Here we go. I'm gonna do Hershey's, Eli Lilly, and then I'm gonna do Alta. <laughs> I'm gonna run those three. That's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Sell Abby because we already got an SCHD. I'm gonna run a three way call with Hershey's, Eli Lilly, and Ulta, and we're going to see yeah. what happens. I'm going to split it up into three and leave it there. Ulta is what my wife got started in the first place and her thing. That was her number one thing. She's like, I want to buy Ulta. Can you help me? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so she's in Ulta at 518. And oh right now my it's at God. 550. This stock is so expensive. <laughs> yeah. What's its, uh, let me see. I got a little thing here. Let me check it out as far as. Um, a year ago, this thing was at 343. Now it's at 551. It's going to make me feel good when I walk into Ulta now. PE ratio. Where is it? That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, Let's see. Ooh, 22.9. Ooh, she's, that means that she's not yeah. that expensive. Yeah. And, but she is expensive. Yeah, daughter-wise, but what you're getting for the company. Oh, yeah. I like, I like what I see. Boilingbrook, Illinois. Who do I know that's in Boilingbrook, Illinois? My, yep, 22 point, my, my this uh, ROIC.AI powered by AI shows 22.47 PE and a 20 forward PE. So not bad. Okay, yep. What, what do you think? Who do you think? All right, I have a question here because these are some big stocks here. <laughs> we'll slim her down to two. I got Randy Moss and Terrell Owens, mm -hmm. or I got Jerry Rice. Jerry, who, who are these two receivers here? Here's the thing. So here's, some goats here. here's the way I look at it. So you got Lily, which I think is going to be volatile. Okay. Because you're, because you're he is going to, it did its announcement of, of seeking FDA approval. Right. And then that's going to kind of peter off as the news gets old. And then it's going to be months before anything else happens. Then you've got Hershey and Ulta, which I think are just these, you know, they're the guy on the Price is Right that just climbs the hill all the time. And and I think if you're going long-term, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the three. And if you don't care about movement, you know, if you don't care about, about Lily going from 380 to 320 to 400, you know, back down to 350 over the next year, then you can be okay, okay. With, with Lily. So that's where you're going to kind of decide you know, how you're going to play your portfolio is, are you going to get nervous about Lily when it drops back down to 350, which I think mm -hmm. it probably eventually will just with, it could get some bad news. You know, they could get the FDA can come out and say, well, we're going to hold off any kind of reviews for something or who knows, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, but you could also, you know, just watch it go up to 500 in no time. So I think you're really not bad with any of the three. You just got to kind of decide if, and I'm not speaking to you specifically, I'm saying you to our audience. Okay. You need to decide if you're okay watching the company you just bought at 380 go down to 350 and then take three months to get back up even. You know, are you going to stare at that red number for three months and then get and then say F it and sell it at a loss because you just can't stand looking at the red number? I think that's that's where you're going to be. And that's kind of where you are with any stock, especially in the, in the environment we're all right, we're in right now is yeah. everything's going up, everything's going down. You're going to have winners and losers. Long term, I think all three are, are going to be winners in the long term. I'm That's what I – these are some stocks that I've looked at. I'm like, yo, I need to – I want to own these stocks. I would – personally, and this like is what I've done beat. is they're, they're, in my, they're in M1. You know, my wife and my kids' accounts are in M1. So it's just like they're in there. There's a percentage going to each one every week. When money goes in the M1, it just gets dispersed between the, the stocks that are in there. And I don't never touch it. I don't see it. I don't look at it unless you and I are talking about it really is when I go and kind of check and see what they've been doing because I want them out of sight, out of mind. When they go up and down, I'm trying not to pay attention to them. That's that's how I play it for my own personal uh, peace of mind, right. really. Peace of mind. So I don't have to sit and stare at a red number. No, I got you. Let's see. I'm still, I'm trying to think. And that's how you have to play it too, guys, long term. You have to put like how you're going to look at the <clears> stock market. Um, every day or every time you put it in once again we have to know what type of investors that we are and that's why we like to dollar cost average into the stocks mm -hmm. so like i know if i look at my portfolio one day and i see et is down five percent on the day that's totally fine 
But when I first got into ET, when it went down 5% in a day, my portfolio would go down like 2%, you know, like, you know, total right. now since I've been in ET for over two years now, you know, it goes down 10%. I'm still up, you know, long term exactly. because I've been holding and dollar cost and averaging. And, you know, as you do that, that theory is correct. I've seen it long term. The more you dollar cost average, the better price action you get. Um, so your market fluctuations really don't affect you long term. So yeah, that that definitely attests to um, what you're saying, Paul. As far as um, making sure you know when we buy in, knowing how volatile a stock is, um, and that's the thing too when buying, like you said, buying got right compared to buying to an ETF. You know, an ETF you won't get as as volatile mm -hmm. um, as the uh, just owning the stock outright. But you may also not see the returns that you would see if you bought the stock outright because you got the uh, that balance. 100 stocks in that ETF are going up, some are going down. So the balance is going to be more stable, which is a lot for some people. That's what they need, which is awesome. You know, that's why the yeah. ETFs are doing so well among mm -hmm. um, index investors and some, you know, dividend investors. Yeah. Which, and, you know, yep. That's what that's mutual what funds they, have always done for you. Exactly. Mutual funds. FX, AIX. It's just, it's back to rock. And <laughs> yeah. Xerox, baby, you know, that's, that's up as well. And that, I remember when those were $12 for Xerox or whatever, $11 that was at one point and FX AIX was just hovering in the 138s, 139s. I think it's up now in the 140s. It's back up. I can tell you that I am at 0% on FZ rocks in my account. Uh oh. It's even I am completely, but I've only been doing it since what we talked a few months ago. So it's, it's pretty much even. Okay. My cost per share is 1447 and it's at 1447 when it that's closed. Good. So, yeah, that's like you know just, that the market's moving too, you know? Yeah, that's just money sitting there. So that's my that's my 403B. That's long term. Oh, yeah. With my 10% match from the university. So just stacking, just stacking assets. That's right. So I'm technically up 10%, I guess, if you look at it. Yeah. Wait, well, you're up total? Well, no, if they if they do a 10% match, I'm up 10% oh, yes. no matter what. Yep. We got to stay there five years to get it invested. And we got that time. We got that time all day. I think, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two um, with it. So I'm going to take it up, divide it into two, because I'll get more bang for my buck for sure going to you know, two stocks instead of three. So I think I'm going to do Hershey's. And hmm, should I do <laughs> Because either one, man, you know, I'm not really, both their dividends are 1%. Yeah. I think I'm going to do Alta. Yep, I'm going to do Hershey's and Alta. I'm going to look at one thing real quick. Let me see something. I'm going to go to Finviz. Because so Finviz is kind of fun. Let's see what they say there. Um, Ulta. So, since you guys are awesome, my awesome followers, we'll go ahead and break it down here. So I'm going to take about, it'll be... Be doing about eight hundred going into yeah about eight hundred going into each one right now. May do a little bit more. Ulta has a according to Finviz, Ulta has a target of five sixty. Okay. And it's currently at five fifty. And Lily, currently at three ninety five, is at is even is three ninety six is what they say their price target is. And that's what I'm saying. So, see, Lily has got that up and down because it's it's volatile. Yeah. You know, so if you're looking. What about Hershey? H-S-Y. I'm on uh, Fidelity right now. 273 right now. It's it's over its target price, which is good. And this is just Finviz, guys. But Finviz mm -hmm. is a quick and down and dirty look at it, see what's going on. Um, the most recent. So, April 28th, it was reiterated by a bunch of analysts and it goes from 275 to 310 in there in the different buy weights by target prices you know oh yeah and paul bank of america just raised their price target to 300 on hershey yeah yeah and it's got a bullish engulfing candle too well 27 we know that we know right now at this moment, Dave Greta is yelling at his radio saying, buy Hershey, buy Hershey. Oh, it dude, beats he, the S&P 500. When he hears this here, <laughs> when he hears that I might be buying some chocolate tomorrow, <laughs> he's going to be like that guy off SpongeBob. Have you seen that episode of SpongeBob where that guy's like, chocolate? No. SpongeBob <laughs> is not allowed in my house. 
<laughs> no. We are an anti SpongeBob home. <laughs> oh my God. No one likes SpongeBob anymore. Yeah. I haven't watched it. Wow. But, Never. Uh, not since my not since my grown daughter was a little kid. So I mean she's going on, she'll be 30 here pretty soon. That's how long SpongeBob's been around, number one. And yeah. oh my gosh, no, I can't. <laughs> I just can't. No Spongy Bob. Let's see. And then all right, so Hershey's well, man. Loving these retails would be you know what? So, can I tell you this? What about just, Chipotle? <laughs> Well, that's that's man. I'm telling you, see, that's that's the problem. That's what you do with M1. You just do just do a bunch and just throw it all in there. I, if it was me, I would tell you right now, I would do Hershey and Ulta. That would be me. I'm I'm looking long term, and I think Lily is going to have some opportunities to get in lower than it is right now because you've just seen the run up. They just just did the news for FDA. That's why yeah. you see this run up. I think Ulta is going to be. I think Lily will be a buy back down. Under 380. If you can get 350 in Ulta I, or Lily, I think that's where that's where I'd be looking. Between 350, 380 is where I'd be looking at at Lily. Uh, okay. Let it come back down when because the news just hit last week. So let some of that excitement run out. Wait till it wait wait till it pulls back a little bit. That's what I would do personally speaking. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait on Lily, which is fine. I'm gonna grab Ulta and some chocolate. That's what I'm talking about. And let's see what happens. <laughs> I think I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, we're you're gonna see we're gonna see pullbacks. You know, you, someone's gonna watch this or listen to this podcast, and Ulta's gonna pull back a percent. They're gonna, oh, you dummy, you bought it. Now it's red again. But that's just the stock market. Yeah, that's you know, and that's fine. You know, I, we got the heat from Intel. You know, Remember we you had weathered that, that like a pro. You know, I just said okay, that's okay. Go on Walmart right now. Matter of fact, look down at your laptop. I guarantee you'll see that Intel sticker down on your computer. <laughs> it's not. I can't see. Oh, it's not on yours. Oh, it isn't. I've got a Microsoft Surface. So I'm not sure if it's on there or not. Ooh, I think Microsoft does have Intel Core processor. I'm probably does. I just don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, I just continue to see the vision, and I, like I said, they're building that huge like fob city in Columbus. And one of the uh, guys I work with, he lives in Columbus. And I, mm-hmm. um, and I was like, hey, man, I see Intel down there is uh, filling up a whole like city. He goes, yeah, dude, they are just, they're, they're taking over everything down there. They're building up yeah. stuff. You Amazon's can't, there uh, too. You can't sleep on Intel. Yep. 11th generation Intel Core i7-118 5G7. Whatever that means. <laughs> I, just, I just did the about screen. I'm like, see? that's what's in it. In- Intel's right there at the click of a button. But yeah, oh. so that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Get me some Ulta and some Hershey's, and then we'll let that ride, and we'll see what happens. I'm really thinking. I think you should do. Uh, I think I'm gonna do get a video short. Out. You should do a video short when you make your buy and post that for everyone to watch. They can follow along with you. Yes, I'll, I will. Uh, will actually do that. That's a great idea. And actually, for everyone out there, I'm actually getting prepared next weekend. I'll be at the uh, DivTwit conference in Chicago. Oh, is that yeah. coming up? Oh man, yeah, yeah you guys gonna find out that. Yeah, that's next weekend. Already got stuff, you know, booked in. I'll be flying in on Friday, and then, likely speaking, in the afternoon on Friday, and then we have another, you know, have another day on Saturday. And it'll be good to get out and you know see, you know, put some faces to some names from Twitter, and you know, meet everyone because you know, I love the community, and you know, we've we've grown the community a lot, you know, for the last couple of years, and this is awesome, you know, to start. You know what would be really incredible for you to do is do some on the scene little interviews, you know, five or ten minutes with different people that you meet, and then we can put that together into one video oh, where yeah. you just do a little recap of people I met at the Div Twit, and you can have we do like a little compilation video for mm-hmm. me. I mean, because I'm not gonna be able to make it, uh, yeah. and just like little things to see. And then, uh, and is it? It's the third. It's uh, the fifth and the sixth. May or obviously of next weekend. Okay, maybe we can do. uh, We'll do our pod on one of those days, and you can see who you can grab, and we can do a little on site. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I'll bring the. Maybe you can get like that. Maybe that could be like a Brad Thomas thing. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Brad can find like five ten minutes to sit down with us. That'd be awesome. There's someone else Mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, and you know another thing too. I've been you know dabbling 
you know, more into is the uh, crypto than, you know, buying a little more Ethereum. Uh, been reading That's about a thing. it. Because, you know, I keep seeing it come across the news that, hey, the value of the dollar is dying, you know. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's not to put a scare out there, but, you know, you have to put that mental note like, hey, you know, we got to be, you know, asset forward thinking, you know, because. You always be looking. You never know, you know, what's going to be coming forward. You know, what do you think of the Fed now payment that's coming the forward? That Fed now payment with the government? They said they're, they're canceling. They're thinking about canceling Venmo, Cash App, and Square. And I haven't heard about that. Everything, they're going to be doing everything through uh, Fed now and pay to the government. So the government is going to get rid of a private company that does payment processing and take it over themselves. That sounds like the mm -hmm. that doesn't sound that doesn't sound does very democratic to me. Does the Fed now service as a new instant payment infrastructure development developed by the Federal Reserve that allows financial institutions of every size across the U.S. to provide safe and efficient instant payment services? Yeah, just so they, is it a, so, is it alternative two or do they here, like let's, are let's they going to do something to actually get rid of the ability for private companies to these processes themselves? Let's see. But now it says it's not intended to kill or replace money transfers like Venmo or Cash App. See, that's why you can't be really yeah. watching. Um, Stay off MSNBC, man. Oh, and you know why they're <laughs> doing this? They're doing this just to come back against them because of like scams and for taxes. Yeah, that's yeah. literally another reason why too. So you're more likely going to say, "Hey, you only can do a, up to a certain amount of this money for it to be not recorded on taxes." But on Fed now, you can do your entire transaction, but they're keeping track of the taxes. You know what I'm saying? Right. I feel like they'll implement it in some way like that, where they'll have you more, you'll have more leeway on their system because that's a huge crackdown that they're doing. Is the, they're doing that big time? Yeah, yeah they're trying I mean, to get people. They're going after you know everyone, and people are using Venmo and Cash App to you know that's what they do for you know for their work, and that's how they yeah. accept payments and everything. And now the government's like, well. It's time to go tap on that jar. Everyone seems like they're having way too much fun over there. Yeah, that's. I don't think that's fair. But just watch out for you know for that, guys. Like I said, not to the scare out there, but you know these things are on the way, and you know when they get implemented, and you know we always like to make sure we have our our back our back steps covered and making sure we know how to move forward. Um, I think I need to get going here in a bit, but before I okay. do, I want. Yeah. We'll go back to the AI thing. I want to share something. Yeah, go ahead. This, can y'all see this screen? Yes. This is this is a great place to start. It is AICyclopedia.com. And it just got, it's got free tools. It's got paid tools uh, just for different kinds of AI solutions. Um, awesome. This is where I this found. Oh, so cool. This is where I found the um, the PowerPoint generator. Uh -huh. This is where I found the uh, taking my words and rewording it into a different kind of uh, of a um, yeah. You know, what I'm talking about yeah to a different uh, to a different um to a different strategy like a different yeah, way of saying yeah exactly. no, I got you prank this GPT prank your friends with AI generated voice calls I mean come on so there's all kinds of stuff in here. Even like if you look on the on the free tools, a lot of those are free, but you have limited ab ability to to mess with them. The paid tools, most of them are going to be like five, ten dollars a month for different kinds of opportunities or different kinds of tools That's that they not use. That's bad. I mean, for you know the type of work that you can get done with this, and the yeah. type of income you could potentially be making on certain things, you know that you're that you're niching. You know, and I'm actually signing up for this right now. My cousin Marseille um, was really, really awesome and, you know, really into AI, into crypto, um, you know, into the crypto market. And she really educates me up on, on the AI and stuff that she finds too. And, you know, I share, you know, I share stuff back as well that we find like different, uh, you know, uh, reels and stuff that we see on the, uh, on Instagram and stuff. But this here is just game changer because it's bright. Right. There's so much in there. And that's like a yeah, little... Yeah, there's new stuff put in there. They have a little you can sign up for a little newsletter that they send out with new stuff coming out. I think it comes out every weekend. But that's something I've been using and I'll put a link into it in the show notes and we'll link it when we post up our pod on Twitter. But it's something you guys gotta get into, at least to find out how it can help you in your life and your business. And yeah. also to know, you know, if you're in a if you're in an industry or you do a job that could be threatened by this, then 
I think you've become efficient at these tools and then you can, you can give it your own role and you can do something different. If you're a developer out there and it looks like AI is coming after developers and its ability to code, then you mm -hmm. just become better at prompting and you become better at using these tools and you make the company realize that they need you and if, yeah, they can use AI, but AI is only good as the input. You know, you can make a picture with, mid journey AI, but it's only, it's how you describe what you want to see will de determine how good the, the output is from the AI. And that's what they're thinking. So that's where I think the benefit and the opportunity is for some people is learning how to be these prompt engineers yes, that sir. I've here, you know, some, and now they're commanding big bucks because it's such a niche area, but if you can learn how to be a prompt person, the same way some people learn how to be coders and you can create your own little, your own little niche as far as uh, business goes. Yes, that is a fact. I mean, that's why I think AI is going to be, I say, hey, you know, it's you're not going to really put like a, a government on AI or anything like that, but don't let them do that. And then that's what's just going to limit the what the power it has now. So use it for advantage right now, or it's going to be used against you. Right. All right, dog. Hey, man, it's good finally catching up with you, brother. It Heck really yeah, was. Man. It was, this was awesome. I can't wait to get this out to the followers and the listeners out there. Cause I know they've been, um, you know, dying to get caught up on us and hear what we've been doing, you know, in our portfolios and outside on our uh, personal lives and stuff. And it was great catching up with you as well Good to hear that the fam and you are doing well as doing well. Yeah. You too, brother. Have fun next week. I look forward to talking to you from Chicago. Yes, sir. Oh, you go to a man. game too, right? I got yeah oh yeah we got I gotta I gotta talk to Dave about the tickets yeah I forgot the game's <laughs> going on too uh, yeah we're more likely gonna hit a game and I'll, I'm more likely gonna see what guys are interested in doing that but hopefully everyone is but awesome. we'll see awesome man all right you want to take us out all right guys this is the dividend dog and options underscore legacy here on the investing on a nine to five podcast we thank you guys again for sticking with us for the over in our podcast today it was great getting caught up with paul and myself and obviously letting you guys know what's been going on we will catch you guys on the next video don't forget to like share and subscribe yeah